What's going on YouTube? It's Taylor from Ranch Strategies with Medicine to Bad Places. We're out here in the woods, we're doing another comms check, and in this one, we're putting UHF up against VHF. So we're out here at our normal starting point at the half mile mark. We're gonna do our comms checks here at the half mile, three quarters of a mile, and then one mile out. We'll go back, listen to the audio, compare for ourselves. So I do run comms for ranch strategies. However, full disclosure, I don't consider myself a radio guy. I am a general class licensed ham radio operator. But in my career, we have radio technicians. I consider those guys radio guys. And I'm actually going to have one of our radio techs onto the channel to get into some more stuff that's out of my scope, but he can kind of break down and, and simplify for all of us. Because if you're getting into radio, you're starting to research it, whether it be for yourself, whether it be for a part of your preparedness plan, for your community, one of the things you're going to start running into right off the bat is UHF or VHF. So in general, VHF, very high frequency or two meters for the ham guys. Um, they operate roughly in the 138 to 174 megahertz frequency band and UHF, ultra high frequency or 70 centimeters for the ham guys, they operate in the 400 to 512 megahertz frequency band, making UHF roughly three times higher in frequency than VHF. So one important characteristic of radio waves is the wave length and that's just the distance between the peaks on a wave. So wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency. And what that means is lower frequencies have longer wavelengths while higher frequencies have shorter wavelengths. Why is this important to us when we're just trying to figure out which band or which radio we want to get and which band we want to be on? The lower frequencies with their longer wavelengths tend to travel longer distances in open spaces and they kind of curve with the distant horizon while your higher frequencies with their shorter wavelengths tend to travel in you know straighter lines and do not bend as much with the curvature of the earth so if you're getting into the research you know all the experts are basically out there saying since vhf tends to bend with the curvature of the earth more than uhf they say that is what is ideal for out there applications where distance is the primary need however a big disadvantage to VHF is that it does not work well indoors. It will not penetrate walls or especially reinforced concrete. So UHF with its higher frequencies and shorter wavelengths will penetrate better than VHF. So it should be used, you know, anytime a user is going to be trying to communicate indoors, especially when trying to go through reinforced concrete structures. Um, UHF, they say, is also the better choice for urban areas with lots of houses and commercial buildings because um, the radio signal will be able to pass through that. Now, I've done all this research, I understand all of that, and yes, in theory, that's how it should be. The problem is, I don't know anybody that's out there trying to get into this for our purposes that's operating in a vacuum. Um, so, we come out here, we purposely choose this course because there is dense foliage, there are some, you know, sporadic housing structures, and there's terrain changes. So, you know, this is not flat, perfect terrain. So that's why we're out here and we want to see what is going to get through and work better for our real world purposes. Should we lean towards more VHF or go towards UHF? So with that, let's get into it. Since we've done a ton of testing already on our UHF frequency, we're gonna start there. So UHF analog, and that will kind of be the comparison that we're looking to work off of. So testing on the XTS 2500, half mile range on analog, testing one, two, three, four, five. So testing on the XTS 2500, half mile range on analog, testing one, two, three, four, five. So from there, we're gonna start with what is probably one of the top tier radios on the market right now, and that's the 
Apex 7000. So testing on the Apex 7000 at a half mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five on VHF. From there, we're gonna to go to an HT-1000. And again, this is just VHF analog. So, testing the HT-1000 half mile range on analog. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And then finally, just to see how it does against, you know, the top tier Motorola and then a, you know, normal tier HT-1000, we brought the HD-1 because that was the winner of our budget video. And we'll see how that does. Again, VHF, and we'll give it a shot. Testing half mile range on the HD-1 on VHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's go out to three quarters of a mile. Okay, so we made it to the just over three quarters of a mile mark. Uh, one thing I do want to point out in all of these tests that we've done, both this current one and in the past, we are always using the stock standard antenna that comes with the radios. So, First we're gonna do, again, our control. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS at three quarters of a mile, UHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the XTS at three quarters of a mile, UHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, we'll go back to the Apex 7000. Testing one, two, three, four, five, three quarters of a mile on the apex. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five, three quarters of a mile on the apex. Testing one, two, three, four, five. From there, the HT1000. Testing one, two, three, four, five on the HT-1000, three quarters of a mile. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And then the budget winner, the HD-1. Testing one, two, three, four, five. On the HD1, three quarters of a mile. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, last stop. We're headed to a mile. Okay, here we are, one mile. So, let's start with the UHF control. Testing one mile range on the XTS 2500. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Analog at one mile. From there, the Apex 7000. Testing VHF on the Apex 7000. One mile range, testing one, two, three, four, five. Apex 7000, one mile range.
All right, to the HT-1000. Testing one mile range on the HT-1000 on VHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And then finally, the HD-1. Testing one mile range on the HD-1 on VHF. Testing one, two, three, four, five. One mile range on the HD-1. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's it. This should be interesting. Again, the uh, foliage here is pretty dense. I tried to find somewhat of a little bit of a clearing to do each one if the distance was correct. So let's go back and see. Okay, so there are the results. As usual, we let them speak for themselves. At the one mile mark, none of the radios were able to get an audible signal through, which there is a lot of dense foliage and the train feature was just too much for them to overcome. So if we concentrate and look just at the results at the three quarter mile mark, that's kind of where we can make some determinations. The UHF got through the best, despite that being on a UHF whip antenna. The Apex 7000, with the size of that radio and the size of that antenna, for all intents and purposes, you know, it should have reached the receiver and it did, but it was a very weak signal. You know, some of the radio guys would kind of describe that as being down in the weeds. The HT1000, Again, for being a Motorola product and a you know public safety grade radio, I was shocked that it didn't get anything through, especially when right behind that, the HD1, with a, which was our budget winner radio with its stock antenna, got an you know discernible signal through to the receiver. So that was pretty impressive. I hope you liked this, re this uh, testing. Hope you enjoyed the results of it. Hope it helps you if you're trying to figure out if you were going to go more of the VHF or UHF route. We are going to do some more testing on this. Maybe take this over to the marine environment to do some of the signal testing over the water to kind of give it some ideal conditions and see what changes. We're going to do a bunch more stuff with GRMRS, FRS, MERS in the future, some plate carrier stuff, some antenna location stuff. We have a bunch planned. Uh, we're also talking about doing some giveaways for this channel in, in the future. Speaking of giveaways, next week, June 10th through the 14th, we are going to be in Ohio at the Ohio Tactical Officers Association Conference. We'll be in the trade show on Tuesday. We're teaching on Friday. If you happen to follow this YouTube channel and you're gonna be there, come by the booth. We're gonna do some giveaways there. It may help your chances of winning if you have some pre-exposure to us. In addition to that, because we're going to the conference, we got a whole bunch of our hats in stock. If you happen to be in the need for a new hat, here's a picture of all the different color schemes that we have. If you like one of these, go to our YouTube's main profile page and there is a PayPal link. If you click on that and you donate 30 bucks to the channel, we will mail you out a hat. Just send us an email, uh, info at ranchstrategies.com. Let us know who you are, the address to send it to, and which color scheme you like, and we'll get it out to you. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this. I really appreciate all of the likes and subscribes. It's been through the roof, which is awesome to see. It makes us uh, enjoy doing it. And with that, we'll see you next time.